Starting us off at number 10 is the Altamira Cave Paintings. These cave paintings are located near Santillana del Mar, which is in the northern part of Spain. Funnily enough, the paintings were discovered by accident by a hunter named Modesto Cubias in 1868, but weren't giving much mind until 1879. These paintings shocked everyone, and I mean everyone. Why? Because it was so well preserved, specialists seriously doubted their authenticity. The paintings were done around 35,600 years ago, yet their colours and details were so vibrant it was quite suspicious. It was only at the start of the 20th century that they were accepted as authentic. These paintings are single handedly the biggest pieces of evidence of Magdalenian culture, and most depict charcoal and ochre, 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 let me know if that's how you say it, pictures of horses, handprints, and bisons. They were so impressive that Picasso himself said after Altamira, all is decadence. I mean, that's a, that's pretty heavy words from Picasso himself. Coming in at number 9 are the aliens. These pictographs were found in the Wanamura Gorge in Australia, again my apologies if I said that wrong. These paintings date back to approximately 3000 BC and they depict the aboriginal one genus, I hope I said that right as well, I probably didn't, I'm sorry, which is a type of religious deity or supreme spirit that were the creators of land and people. But the way they've depicted them is just super weird, they literally look like white versions of the alien emojis on our phone. White faces with no mouth and large black holes for eyes and they also have this sort of halo around them. The other black figures drawn amongst them look like what can only be described as closely resembling Dementors from Harry Potter. Some interpretations of these paintings say that extraterrestrial beings visited earth tens of thousands of years ago and had direct contact with these people. Some aboriginals believe that they even played a role in creation which could explain why they drew the Wanginas looking like aliens. At number 8 we have the Chauvet Cave. This one is located in the south of France and only really gained notoriety in 1994 after three speleologists discovered its walls were covered in paleolithic artwork and that it also contained the fossilized remains of various animals, many of which had become extinct by then. So that's a lot of useful scientific and historical knowledge in that cave already and we haven't even specifically talked about the art yet. The cave shocked people for many reasons, it was ridiculously large and the quantity and quality of the art artwork found was quote unquote spectacular. It's literally been named a cave that has some of the best preserved figurative cave paintings in the world, which is insane since most of the art there is 30 to 32,000 years old. The paintings had animals in there that had never appeared in previous ice age paintings as well as many other animals that had. Surprisingly it had no paintings of full human figures, just one figure that seemed to be a vulva attached to an unfinished pair of legs. As of now it's one of the most significant prehistoric art sites on earth and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Filling our number 7 slot is Las Giel, Las Giel, Las Gol. There were so many types of pronunciations I really don't know which one's right, please don't slate me in the comments. <laughs> These are the cave formations found in the rural parts of Hargeisa in Somaliland. Even though the cave was known to locals of that area for ages, the caves only gained international attention in 2002 when an archaeological survey was undertaken by French researchers and they were shocked to find this cave undocumented. The cave contains very vivid paintings which are some of the earliest known cave paintings in the Horn of Africa. The rock art was created between 9000 and 3000 BC and it's so well preserved till this day because of the granite overhangs. The artwork features cattle in ceremonial robes with humans and the necks of the cattle are embellished with plastron, which is basically the flat part of a turtle shell. I didn't know that either but now you do as well. And they also include other animals like dogs and giraffes. The colours on these paintings are so vivid, I would believe if someone told me they literally painted them a month ago rather than thousands of years ago. Now at number 6 are the psychedelics. Tassili Najar is a national park located in southeast Algeria. And of course, these caves also became part of UNESCO's World Heritage Sites list in 1982. Most of the art in there dates back 12,000 years and there are more engravings than there are paintings. There are 15,000 engravings in the cave and they consist of mostly large animals like crocodiles and antelopes and it even has humans dancing and hunting. But they also include something called fungoid rock art. Back in 1989, psychedelics researcher Giorgio Samarini claimed that the paintings that look like fungoids were proof that people inhabiting the Sahara Desert had taken psychedelics. There's one bit of artwork that depicts various masked figures in a line dressed as dancers surrounded by festoons. And each dancer has a mushroom-like object in their hand with lines coming 
coming out of the mushroom and connecting to the dancer's head. Now it's obviously open to interpretation on what the picture means, but I think you can see why Giorgio took away from it what he did. And believe it or not, psychedelics aside, the caves also house alien depictions. Flying saucer like figures in the sky and people that look like humans but have one eye and just have very alien like features. The pictures are quite creepy, I'm not gonna lie, but these caves seem to just have it all. Coming in at number five is the prehistoric Sistine Chapel. Yes, I'm not kidding you, that's what some people have nicknamed the Lascaux Caves. Located in the southwestern part of France, there are a lot of caves in France on this list, I just realized. The caves have in them more than 600 paintings, mostly of big mammals in the area, humans, and abstract signs. The art inside the cave is meticulously split into those three categories. The paintings were the product of a huge combined effort spanning many generations. The earliest painting was done 17,000 years ago. However, there's one painting called the crossed bison that grabbed everyone's attention. The crossed hind legs of the animal create the illusion that one bison is closer to the viewer than the other. The fact that Paleolithic cave painters had that skill and primitive form of perspective is evidence that they were advanced for their time. And funnily enough, the entrance of the cave was found by an 18 year old walking his dog and his dog fell into a hole which ended up being the tunnel. The boy came back with three friends thinking the tunnel was an entrance into the Lascaux Manor but then they found the paintings. By 1995 the cave had 1,200 daily visitors but that created a preservation problem because lichens and crystals began to develop and on top of that they started having a huge fungus problem as well so they've convened many times to see how they can preserve the cave. At number 4 are the x-ray paintings. The Kakadu National Park is a protected area in the northern part of Australia and the place is massive. I'm talking the size of the country Slovenia massive. It's also home to one of the earth's biggest concentrations of rock artwork. Some are nearly 20,000 years old and they provide an insight into Aboriginal life like nothing else has before. The park has two main galleries, Burungku, Burungkai and Uber, Uber, I really, I'm sorry if I pronounced those wrong, I know I did, I'm sorry. For these people, the act of painting was more important than the painting itself and so they cover older paintings with newer ones. The art shows the objects they use every day, the things they do and the animals they hunt. Some paintings can only be done by the person with the right knowledge, so someone who had no magic knowledge could not do a sorcery painting for example. They would paint animals in order to place them in touch with the spirit of that animal which would hopefully ensure them a successful hunt. But the painters didn't just draw the animals, they drew their organs and their bones as well which is the first time discoverers had found depictions like that and hence they were called x-ray paintings. Filling our number 3 slot are the underwater paintings. This one's about the Koski cave located near Masai, France. The cave was discovered by a man named Henry Koski back in 1985 but the public only found out about it 6 years later when 3 divers actually got lost and died in the cave. But if you wanted to find the cave today you would just have to go through a 175 meter long tunnel which is all well and good except the entrance to that is 37 meters under sea level. That puts a bit of a spanner in the works I think. Sadly 4 fifths of the cave's art was permanently submerged underwater and hence destroyed but 150 pieces of cave art are still intact. Art like hand stencils date back to 27,000 years BP and the newer art of different animals and signs dates back to 19,000 years BP. People were stunned at the fact the art was a underwater and b it was partially intact. In circumstances like that the art would usually be lost so it was miraculous that it hadn't been and that's why it deserves the number 3 slot I think. You guys can disagree. Now at number 2 are the Magura cave paintings. This cave is located in the northwest region of Bulgaria. All the paintings were done from bat poo and are done on stone. This is probably the most extensive series of cave paintings ever found and they actually cover a range of epics. The Neolithic, some other ones that I can't pronounce so I'm not going to try and even the start of the early bronze age. There are more than 700 drawings in the cave and they fall into 4 groups. Zoomorphic, symbolic, anthropomorphic and geo geometric figures. The figures are mostly stick figures and not extremely detailed but it's very easy to grasp what they're trying to depict. The cave was formed nearly 15 million years ago and you'd have to walk a good 1.6 miles to cover the whole thing. It has one main gallery that includes 6 halls and the largest one being the arc hall that's 69 feet high and 420 feet long. This cave is filled with quote unquote art and is bigger than nearly all art galleries in the world. No wonder people were shook, I would be too. And finally 
Finally, at number one is the Cave of Hands, also known as Cueva de las Manos. These caves are located in Argentina and are insanely famous for the numerous, numerous hands painted inside the caves. The art dates back to 13,000 to 9,000 years ago, and obviously, a lot of different groups of people occupied the caves during that time. I mean, some of the earliest artwork has been carbon dated to 7,300 BC. All the hands inside the cave are stenciled, and most of them are left hands, indicating that the people probably used their right hand to hold the spraying pipe or they sprayed the back of their right hand with their left. It made sense, trust me. Either way, the cave was filled with hands. There was also artwork of full human beings, geometric shapes, hunting scenes, etc. They used mineral pigments to make the images, like iron oxides to get the reds and purples, manganese oxide to make black, and so on. The site became a UNESCO World Heritage Site back in 1999, and people were glad. It's not every day you stumble upon a cave that's filled with sprayed hands dating to 7,300 BC. Just thinking about how much history took place in that cave and all the different people those hands could have belonged to and what their lives would have been like, I mean, it just blows my mind. It really does. Kicking off the list at number 10, Cueva de la Menos. Kicking off this list, we're gonna head to Patagonia, the southern part of Argentina, and it holds some pretty haunting pieces of art from 13,000 years ago. It's also referred to as the Cave of Hands, which can either be really beautiful or absolutely terrifying. Either way you look at it, depends. I don't know, a pile of hands, for some reason, I don't feel at ease looking at this. Whoever got the hands on the top part, hats off to you. That is, that's pure commitment right there. The bone pipes that were used to spray the paint at the wall, well, those bone fragments were aged to around nine to 13,000 years ago. There's something primal about drawing your hands. Like, I remember doing this exact project in grade three. Hands are beautiful. Everyone's got unique, different shaped hands. I would do this, and then I'd write my name Taylor right in the middle, but it was actually Taylor. A chicken scratch. I still can't write. Number nine, Lascaux Cave Murals. These Paleolithic drawings are from 17,000 BC. Haunting to look at to think that humans could draw this well that many moons ago. And I'm still over here drawing suns in the corner of my work. Come on. I gotta step it up. The Lascaux Cave Murals are now a World Heritage Site. In the 40s, you could visit the cave yourself, but thanks to carbon dioxide levels from visitors, and your breath, it was closed later in 1963. Yet the art was literally fading away with every breath that we took. Not only is this one of the oldest pieces of art ever, but these paintings resemble the origin of spirituality. Markings in caves like this from ages ago come long before many religious books. Yet a lot of paintings tend to have demons in them, like biblical demons. Perhaps these drawings were inspired from hallucinations, I mean, hopefully, but many believe it's the first account of a demon interacting with a human being on our planet. Yeah, how lovely is that? And in turn, thousands of years ago, we had to record what happened with the only thing we had, which was, evidently, cave art. Number eight, Romanelli Cave Art. Located in Italy, this was actually discovered just over 100 years ago, so it's actually quite recent. We love new, old art. Hiding this entire time on Italy's southeast coast, only seven meters above the Adriatic Sea, which explains why nobody ever found it this entire time. Well, luckily Mother Nature has our back. She's sending us clues. There's actually a collapse that happened inside of the cave, which created, well, more difficulties in the search in the long run, but it actually helped. Through excavation of the cave, researchers have found deposits of animal bones, human bones, and of course, art. What a loaded discovery. You got a little bit of everything. It's a lot of loot. They found what's called a bovid, which is some geometric patterns which are made using moon milk. It's the soft white material found in limestone, and it seems to be a bird, I guess, which is pretty amazing considering how few of these we see in the ancient art world. This art is great, but next to bones, it sounds like this wasn't really a passion project. It sounds like some poor soul was stuck in that cave and had to make a bird to avoid going insane. Animal bones suggest they had something to eat along the way, so I'm just saying, they had time to create this masterpiece. Also, what a horrible scenario. Number seven, Las Gal. Las Gal is a complex of caves and different rock shelters located in northwestern Somalia. These caves and shelters contain some of the earliest known art pieces in the Horn of Africa, which is amazing considering the history of humans and Africa in general and how far back we go. That's where it all began. And these prehistoric cave paintings show cows in ceremonial robes. And there's also some humans. There's also some domesticated dogs. And of course, since it's Africa, a giraffe is also hanging in. Whatever's going on, it's beautiful, and I want to be part of it. I have FOMO. The paintings are extremely well preserved. They're beautiful. Again, I just want to know what's going on, if I'm being honest. Looks like a good time here, or a really bad time. 
Mm, never know. Number six, Forbidden Friends. Lascaux cave paintings date back to some, you know, 17,000 years ago, and a lot of the art seen on the walls of the cave is art that depicts animals. There's about 900 of them. This thing is fully loaded. Over 600 are pretty identifiable. In it, we see cattle, bison, some wild cats, bears, birds, but no reindeer which is odd. This is where the mystery comes into play. What happened here? Did they just forget about this one specific animal out of 900, although they ate reindeer meat daily? It took a long time to realize, but our best guess now is that these works of art, these animals, are ones they never caught. Yeah, the forbidden Pokemon, the ones they didn't catch at all. Animals they would dream about, if anything. They could never hunt or catch them because, well, especially at this time, they were way too fast, too large, and too strong. Plus, this is a time before certain weapons or tools were ever available. Yeah, more than fair. I would much rather draw a bison than have to tackle one. We're good. Number five. The Cave of El Castillo, AKA the Cave of the Castle. This is a Stone Age rock shelter located in Spain, and it holds some of the oldest cave paintings that we have ever found, period. The most notable of all the art found here is referred to as the Gallery of Hands, which is a panel of abstract signs and hand stencil rock art that has been dated to around 40,000 years ago. So again, so old. This cave holds over 100 different images, such as several rock engravings of deer, again, animals, as well as other animals that would have been seen in the area, like bison, goats, horses, aurochs, which are now an extinct species. There are even images found in this cave of dogs, which is extremely rare in prehistoric cave art. We love dogs. In Egypt, they had cats. Over here, we have dogs. We're loving them. We're loving them both sides. Right now, it's debated whether it was Neanderthals that were responsible for this art, or if it was Homo sapiens after all this. And to be honest, it can go either way. There's a fine line, and art is just the only divider of that line. Number four, Uber. As a lanky guy such as myself, I, this next work of art, this hits close to home, for sure. Located in the Kakadu National Park, Northern Australia, this area was quite ideal when it came to shelter. The large overhanging rocks, I mean, if you're okay with giant spiders, you're at least staying dry every day. Early humans chose the specific spots for their art and it totally makes sense. Some of the art here is said to be 20,000 years old, featuring many different animals, like catfish, turtles, possum, wallabies, Tasmanian tigers, oh my, this thing was loaded. Along with the extensive amount of rock art that can be found here, there's also art that was found painted on skeletons of animals in the area as well, which sure, on paper sounds beautiful and all, but now that we're way past it, we can look back and say, hey, I didn't want to see that. Seeing this unfold in real time would be quite stressful. Just a dude painting a fresh pile of bones, I'd be like, hey, really good stuff, super early, but I'm gonna go throw up. Love it, we love art. Number three, Gorham's Cave. Neanderthal rock engravings dating back to 37,000 years ago. Let's do it. Found in Gorham's cave, Gibraltar, the biggest question here as far as cave art goes, did Neanderthals do this or was this modern man? That's always the question, who done it? The thing with art is that it's so subjective. Are these scratches art? Is this animal art? Is this even an animal to begin with? What is this? Is it a circle with, mm, mm, what is it? In total, there's eight tiny rock engravings found. They were discovered by a team of scientists back in July 2012. They were tucked away on a ledge in the far back part of the cave, so they were hiding. Were these etched into the walls before the time of modern man? So far, we're leaning towards Neanderthal, again. Being one of the earliest types of art in the world, yeah, it's plausible. This was definitely a Neanderthal. It feels so like bad, because like, the art isn't that good, so they're like, mm, I don't know if they did it. It's like, I think, I think they did. I think they knew quite a bit. They knew how to hunt mammoths, like, I can't do that, none of us can do it in this building, definitely. Number two, ruined cave art. This painting is the oldest known painting in India, which is a feat in itself, and it was found in the walls of Sit Navasal Cave. It was originally believed that this painting was first created in the first century BCE. The painting depicts things like human figures, fish, elephants, birds, different floral patterns, recognizable things. The haunting part here is that another artist ended up drawing over the original ancient artwork, which, I mean, on one hand, if you did that today, if you spray painted over some somebody's art outside, that's bad juju. That's like the worst of the worst. You're upsetting a lot of people and you're for sure in danger. Imagine that in the ancient form. That takes so much time and effort to ruin somebody's work. These paintings have been severely vandalized and a lot of the areas are permanently now in bad shape. Yeah, leave ancient art alone. Do you wanna get cursed? This is definitely how you get cursed. Don't, don't touch it. Look, don't touch. Number one, Altamira Cave. And last but not least, we're heading over to Spain for a last painting on today's list. This one has us scratching our heads still because obviously it's quite old. This is prehistoric art. This is the oldest of the oldest. This time we have charcoal drawings and polychrome paintings that show some contemporary fauna and human 
Again, hands. The fascinating part here is that these are prehistoric. They're the first European cave paintings with a prehistoric origin. That is massive. It was thought for a long time that prehistoric humans weren't capable of abstract thought. Yet, here we are. On YouTube, I'm like, ah, we're getting better. Handprints. Yet again, that's for sure abstract. It's said the earliest of these paintings here can date back to the Upper Paleolithic period, which is 36,000 years ago. That's quite old. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Neanderthal art. Back in 2018, it was announced that one of the oldest ever known cave paintings made by Neanderthals was found in the Spanish caves of La Pasiega, Maltaviso, and Ardales. This art is said to be around 64,000 years old, and to be honest, it's quite abstract, which may not be all that surprising. Archaeologists found things like drawings of ladder-like lines, hand stencils, and a stalagmite structure decorated with ochre. It is thought that the Neanderthals that created this art left it in a location that they viewed as special. I mean, many of the hand stencils appear in this smaller, hard-to-reach area of the cave, which means that the person who made them would have had to prepare not only the pigment, but also some sort of source of light prior to entering the cave. It was certainly a deliberate act. My favorite thing about this art though is the symbolism. It is said that, quote, the significance of the painting is not to know that Neanderthals could paint, it's the fact that they were engaging in symbolism, and that's probably related to an ability to have language. Like, Basically, this was almost their way of communicating. This was their way of leaving behind a story. I don't know. I just think that's very cool and also a very important stepping stone in terms of early language development. It is said that researchers are looking into the acoustics of the area now where the cave art is located because they are interested to see whether the placement of the art had anything to do with the sounds people could make or hear in the particular spot. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Bimbetka Rock Shelters. There are a collection of rock shelters that are known in central India known as the Bimbetka and they contain over 600 different paintings that span through the prehistoric Paleolithic and Mesolithic periods, which is truly unbelievable. The oldest of all of the paintings that can be found here is thought to date back to around 12,000 years ago. The paintings here are basically what you'd expect as it reflects the sort of lives around the people who made them. The paintings show us a glimpse into what their lives looked like, and they also show an array of animals that these people crossed, such as tigers, lions, and crocodiles. One really exceptional thing about this art is that it shows us the sort of of transition into the Stone Age that these people had. The art moves from depicting dances and rituals to hunting scenes with the tools that they were able to create. It gives us just a tiny glimpse into the evolution of humankind in that area all those years ago. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Tadrard Akakis. Probably said that horribly wrong. <laughs> this is a mountain range that is located in the Sahara Desert of western Libya, and I guess the art is more rock art than cave art, but I mean, it's all in incredibly fascinating regardless of where the rocks reside. Some of the art that can be found here is said to date back to at least 14,000 years ago, and most of the paintings or carvings are of animals that were in the area, such as giraffes, elephants, ostriches, and camels, but also of men and horses. The art found here was created over quite a span of time, which gives us a remarkable insight into the changes that happened throughout these years. The changes in the fauna and flora, but also the changes in the way of life of those who made them. They showed the differences of the different populations that ended up succeeding each other in the area and region of the Sahara. In our number 7 spot today, we have Uber. This location is a group of rock outcrops that are located in the Kekadu National Park, which is a protected area in the Northern Territory of Australia. This location is likely to have become the site that it is due to the large rock overhangs, which would have provided the perfect shelter for the indigenous people of the land for thousands of years. It's super cool to think about why these early humans chose these specific spots for their art, and I mean this one totally makes sense. Some of the art here is said to be 20,000 years old, and most of it depicts different animals such as catfish, snake-necked turtles, pignose turtles, rock-haunting ringtail possums, wallabies, and even a Tasmanian tiger. Along with the extensive amount of rock art that can be seen here, there is also art that was found that was painted on the skeletons of animals in the area too, which is absolutely absolutely captivating and very intriguing. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Altamira Cave. This cave is located in Spain and it was renowned for the prehistoric art that it features. There are charcoal drawings and polychrome paintings that show some more contemporary and local fauna, as well as human hands. This art is striking and it truly
truly is incredible, but another reason why this art is so exceptional is the fact that it was the first European cave paintings for which prehistoric origin was suggested. Many people disputed this for quite a while because it was thought that prehistoric humans weren't capable of abstract thought, but this was later disproved by similar art found years later that showed that it is absolutely possible that the early humans had these sort of capabilities. It is said that the earliest of the paintings found here can date back to the upper Paleolithic period 36,000 years ago. In our number 5 spot today we have hand and footprints. Quite recently, a team of international scientists uncovered a pair of ancient hand and footprints that really changed our way of thinking and our understanding of early cave art. These impressions were discovered at the Tibetan Plateau and are thought to be somewhere between 169,000 to 226,000 years old, making them quite possibly the oldest art ever discovered. What's more is that they believe that this art was actually made by children. These hand and foot impressions appear to have been placed intentionally on an area of soft travertine, which is a form of terrestrial limestone. This travertine was deposited by water from what is now an inactive hot spring, but over time as the travertine transformed into stone, it preserved these small hand and footprints. You might be wondering how we can determine hand and footprints as art, but experts say that we can determine this because the traces were not made during normal movement or to stabilize motion, and because quote, care appears to have been taken with the composition, they qualify as an early act of cave art. In our number 4 spot today we have the Romanelli cave art. This art was found quite recently in the Romanelli cave which is located in Italy. The first art in this cave was discovered more than 100 years ago so these newer findings of this stone age art really is quite the discovery. This cave is located on Italy's southeast coast and is just 7 meters above the Adriatic Sea which has made exploration of the cave quite difficult in the past. There was actually a collapse that happened inside of the cave which created more difficulties in in the search. Through excavation of the cave, researchers have found deposits of animal bones, a small quantity of human bones, and several portable art objects such as stone fragments, and of course, the thing we're all here for today, just the art. The art that was found here includes a bovid, some geometric patterns which were made using quote moon milk, which is a soft white material that builds up in limestone caves, and art that depicts a bird, which is rare as birds were not usually depicted in the art that was normally found in the area during this time. The discovery gave some very valuable insights as the fact that some of the images are layered over one another has shown that this cave was used for a much longer period of time than what was previously thought. In our number 3 spot today we have the Cave of El Castillo. The Cave of the Castle is a Stone Age rock shelter that is located in Spain, and it holds some of the oldest cave paintings we have ever found. The most notable of all of the art found here is referred to as the Gallery of Hands, which is a panel of abstract signs and hand stencil rock art that has been dated back to around 39,000 years ago. The lengthy cave holds over 100 different images, such as several rock engravings of deer, as well as images of other animals that would have been in the area like bison goats, horses, and aurochs, which are a now extinct species. There are even images found in the cave of dogs, which is actually extremely rare in prehistoric cave art. Right now, it is debated whether it was Neanderthals that were responsible for this cave art, or if it was Homo sapiens, after all, and... To be honest, I mean, it could go either way. In our number 2 spot today we have the Fumain Cave. The cave art that exists here is an important source of art that was created during the Upper Paleolithic period, and this cave is home to some of the oldest stone art that can be found in Italy. Many of these paintings were created using red ochre, and it includes of course depictions of animals, but also of sort of half animal, half human hybrids, which may symbolize some sort of belief system, or perhaps even mythology that existed at the time. It's hard for us to say for sure, but it certainly is a reflection of some sort of belief system that existed at the time. This is not only some of the oldest figurative cave art that can be found, but it also helped us to shed light on the contributions of both Neanderthals and modern man to Stone Age art during this time period. According to Alberto Broglio, professor of paleontology at the University of Ferrara, evidence obtained from this cave shows that there was a clean break between Neanderthal and modern humans, both in their culture and 
and their lifestyle. In our number one spot today, we have the Chevette Cave. This cave is located in southern France and it contains some of the best and most well preserved cave paintings that have been discovered to date, which truly is incredible. It isn't quite clear exactly when these paintings were made, and that's actually quite a source of debate among experts. It is known, however, that this cave definitely holds some of the oldest discovered cave paintings, some of which are thought to possibly be 30,000 years old. Most of these paintings consist of different animals, and there are actually no complete human figures seen here. There are a few panels of red ochre handprints and hand stencils, and a ton of abstract lines and dots that can be found throughout the cave. I could honestly talk about these specific cave paintings for an entire video, they're so interesting. One drawing seen here, which was later overlaid with a drawing of a deer, is sort of reminiscent of a volcano spewing lava, which was similar to the regional volcanoes that were active at the time, and if confirmed, this would represent the earliest known drawing of a volcanic eruption. Not only this, but those who created the art here used techniques that are very rarely seen in any other cave art. Like they scraped the walls of debris before starting so as to give them a more blank canvas to work on. That's simply amazing. Mm -hmm. 